Good evening from New York. Today's subject, <clears throat> the politics of love. How is inner mind communication like near-death experiences that intrigues your mind? Well, inner mind uh, communication, plain and simple, um, is kind of like creating and experiencing your own inner dream. And uh, sometimes I call it the daylight dream. You're using your imagination, you're using your awareness, and you're practicing forms of empathy there. And uh, empathy means you share the feelings of others. Well, guess what happens in your dreams? You're playing all the roles, all the parts. What do the near-death experience folks say? Oh, I met all these people. And I, you know, it, we didn't even need language. We, I knew what they were thinking, and they know, knew what I was thinking, and, and we communicated. <laughs> Well, in your imagination, or in your dream, you are your brain anyway. Is the is the creator of all you imagine, so basically how you the creator of how you experience reality and your life. So, when you're communicating inside your imagination, you're already developing a sense of empathy between yourself and uh, other people in your mind. What happens when you walk into a political situation and you're talking to someone who differs from your opinion? Well, you feel that empathy. You know, you've been training yourself with inner mind communication using empathy and awareness and uh, it becomes something that you do in life. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And, uh, yeah, so what happens when you bring your inner mind near-death experience into politics. Well, first of all, you understand a, and have a real sense of connection between yourself and other people, no matter what their opinions are. And since you really don't know exactly what someone in real life is thinking, it gives you a sense of wonder. and uh, But it's similar to the wonder that you have within your own inner mind communication. Why? Because you are communicating in part to the imaginer of all you imagine, your inner artist. And that is full of wonder, and you realize that this inner artist is something that exists in every every person you meet. They have an imaginer of all they imagine. The thing is, they need to connect to that imaginer uh, in a uh, caring sort of dialogue. And uh, that imaginer of all you imagine imagines various perspectives in which you can practice Forms of empathy, which are at the root of your virtues. Compassionate empathy, which gives you goodness. Where is that very, very useful? Uh, it, in it, well, it when you're communicating with other people. That's where you're going to find a great need. Exchange of love. Uh, playing both the, the expression of 
empathetic uh, compassion and also experience the on the receiving end. And uh, this is the wonderful thing, and you know, and, and this is thing in real life too, where when you what you give is immediately also what you get because you are experiencing in your giving of love a reception of that love yourself all of this stuff is a kind of mirroring within your mind a kind of echo chamber <laughs> so you know if you you know people may not pay much attention to what you say um they may not be impressed with what you say but they will be impressed with how you present yourself and uh, many people say well one thing never forget is how the person made me feel so Expanding that love flow, expanding that empathetic compassion is very important. Now, there's another form of empathy, uh, objective empathy, in which uh, you're communicating with yourself and yourself. You're communicating between that part of you that is in the drama of your life, call it the kid, the more emotional part of you, um, the one in the positive and the negative dramas. And it communicates with your own inner counselor. Um, the, that objective empathy gives you the value of truth, you know, and it, it's hard to be truthful, you know, about yourself. But uh, in a feeling of uh, sharing with this uh, objective empathy, this loving counselor within you, that you can share anything with, because they're not going to, your inner counselor isn't going to go and put it on the, on the news. And you can share. And um, this, this kind of compassion, um, or I should say love, this kind of loving, uh, which is part of what empathy is, it's... Uh, kind of sharing what somebody else is feeling and understanding them. So, yeah, just like in the near-death experience, you know, you feel that you understand the other person. Whoa. Well, that communication between the kid and you and the counselor helps you from the present moving forward into your life. It's uh, the imaginer of all you imagine, up above what you, your dramatic timeline, up above what you would even call time, imagines, reaches into your drama as that objective empathy to help you from the present moving forward and uh, to help you deal with any helplessness about uh, uh, understanding, you know, where you're at and where you need to go. And um, it's very important. And, of course, the compassionate empathy is about uh, your memories and mining your memories for the good and the bad drama. And, uh, feeling a sense of uh, compassion and caring there. Uh, so it's like 
the dramatic, more emotional you, the kid, helps with anxieties from the present looking into the past. And it's there that you re-experience the past so that you can get the good out of it. And um, the other you're, 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 you might remember things in your past, but uh, you wouldn't be connecting to the feelings involved. And then, you know, that's in a near-death experience, they get in touch with the feelings of themselves and what they think the feelings of the other person uh, is having. And, um, you know, the life review that many report um, is about experiencing, re-experiencing your life and, uh, and uh, with a sense of compassion so that you're able to uh, have the trust to express your feelings honestly and uh, to feel, to even to feel, involves a certain amount of trust in a, in, uh, and that it's safe to do so. Um, in some situations where you were helpless to do so, leaves a kind of anxiety there that um, that's kind of helpless. And uh, that's not something that, that a human being or any mammal handles very well, uh, if at all, in some cases. Uh, so a symbolic struggle sets in, and uh, you don't really know what it is that uh, is guiding you and, uh, and the force of it and so on. And you won't until you relive and unlearn the helplessness that kept you from feeling what was really happening. And, um, and uh, once you do that, then of course you realize it's in the past, almost uh, all of a sudden. Big life changes occur within uh, with uh, NDEs, but those big life changes can occur without getting close to death. You can experience this uh, by the practices that I talk about. Now, a communication with that imaginer of all you imagine, the inner artist, is, uh, you know, the imaginer of all your imaginings, able to create memories for you to help you feel um, things that have happened to you and to help you to reimagine things in a, in a, in a more comforting uh, way, which, um, might help you to, uh, to have a sense of calmer transcendence over the dra drama in your life. You know, you can get outside the drama and you can observe it. And, uh, and you can see it from a caring, um, empathetic uh, creativity. And that's very helpful. So it changes your life. Um, some call it your higher power. Well, it is. Um, you know, and that's not to state anything supernatural. Um, and it's definitely, at least in part, uh, your brain, because that's how you experience things. You, science backs that up. Okay. Now, anything else that happens is uh, the result of uh, that influence. Yeah. So,
there's a great parallel there between uh, near-death experiences uh, in my dreams um, and your dreams will happen uh, differently when you're going through the practices and uh, sometimes I get a life review of sorts and uh, I, get, I, I view my behavior in emotional intelligence that's called self-awareness so the ultimate self-awareness uh, in you is your artist that's outside of your timeline and encouraging you to be the hero and the love and the movie and the story of your life and uh, you know viewing the thing uh, say hey what a great movie it's really enjoyable but uh, yeah, but uh, let's try uh, bringing a greater sense of meaning, you know, to your life by uh, being a hero of love, reaching beyond your comfort zones just a little bit um, in terms of in comforting, you know, in ways that you it isn't even a conscious thing that you're reaching past your comfort zone. Don't be afraid by that, of that statement. When you try to comfort yourself from different perspectives, you move and engage uh, more effectively with an expanded comfort zone. Um, because those different perspectives slowly break down the symbolic so that you become more real so that you don't live for money and power and, you know, controlled as much by greed and, uh, and a need for uh, power, which, you know, and behind that, of course, is, is anxiety. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so you, you don't want to, let the drama of your life be in control of your life and so you want to be up above your experience even of time itself uh seeing yourself in this movie and being able to uh create uh imaginings um for you to engage in so that you can have, just like in your dreams, different perspectives generated. Now, I'd, you want to understand every dream you have, but many more of them you will begin to see um, are telling you things about yourself. And uh, that's important. Now that's I mentioned emotional intelligence. Well, that's that's your self awareness, the artist within you. Um, it goes. I can go deeper. I'll go into that in a minute. But um, and also, but the basic elements of emotional intelligence are self awareness, self control, and compassion which they call empathy. But actually you want to blend a little empathy into all of those things. Um, and that's the path of the inner mind, uh, communication, the, the way of the mystic, the rational mystic. And uh, so, wow. When you, even if you talk about these things, you you begin to move into a space where you're very calm and blissful. Another parallel with uh, NDEs, you know. So just teaching this stuff makes you high. <laughs> yeah. So you can see the compassionate empathy is. Uh, uh, what uh, they are calling empathy 
uh, in emotional intelligence. Uh, they're, that means they're implying that you, you know, the part of emotional intelligence is having empathy for others. So, uh, yeah, so that's covered there. Um, your self-control has to do with uh, your inner counselor, who, caring inner counselor who um, helps you to feel what you feel about the present and help you to move into the future with less anxiety and with greater confidence and a purpose. Um, so it uh, it is about self-control because when you have objective uh, perspective on your emotional uh, self um, that allows you to control um, that emotional self better. So it's great practice for that um, that you can do in your imagination. Um, and I've already covered the self-awareness, which is coming from your ability to be the imaginer of all you imagine, in a sense. You're imagining that you're imagining. Yeah. Consciousness itself is a kind of feedback loop, according to Michio Kaku, something that I mused about for some time. And, of course, hearing a really smart guy like that say the same thing, it's like, yeah, it might be something there, you know? I might have been right. Um, anyway, this is, these practices are all done to comfort yourself. And that's the big difference between this approach and what you will see so many times in medical model. Uh, it, you know, not against it, um, you know, when it's necessary, but if you're relatively healthy, why not try this? Um, you know, if you have problems, you know, see a professional before you, before you do any uh, kind of inner work. But, um, you know, just to get their opinion, that doesn't mean that all experts really are. <clears throat> I don't trust people who haven't done these sort of things for themselves, no matter how educated they are better i better trust someone who who has done these things been there and understands how it works you know the extra education couldn't hurt but uh i think uh if it's not related to uh, neurology and brain research then uh hmm. It may be helpful, I'm saying not, but uh, it can be problematic and a, a problem in itself um, because if you're presenting to some, the last thing you want to do to help someone heal is to, you know, go past their comfort zone or, or get or try to tell them that's where they're going. Um, and uh and just making an effort there's a difference between gradually expanding your comfort zone with comforting approaches and uh feeling forced uh into uh, a broader perspective that you might not be ready for so you know you know, it, that's a problem, opinion. So, yeah. This is, uh, it, it is a lot of different things involved here. Um, if you're looking at religion, well, religion is, it's a good thing, um, sometimes. But for the progressive, and this is a channel for you and for those who are healthy enough to be progressive, um, 
who are reflective enough to understand the benefit of expanding empathy and awareness in our life. Um, this is your channel, and uh, it's up to you to, you know, continue on your journey and help others uh, on theirs. And uh, we hope that this channel can be something that can help you do that. And, uh, and a place where your voice can also be. So, a lot of parallels between inner mind communication and NDEs. And a lot of application in politics. Like I say, you never forget how somebody made you feel. So if they approach you with wonder, with these kinds of passionate uh, efforts, then uh, they will feel more valued. They will feel a connection. And uh, their faith and love will grow. It's real easy to make fun of one another. <laughs> Certainly the more fragile people, uh, like Trump, have a great deal of problems with uh, uh, being made fun of in any way. Um, means that they're, you know, they're hurting and they, they really don't. There's a lot of hurt in them, a lot of damaged faith. And, uh, and these other things are not going to be skills that they well you know, developed enough to have a good, strong ego strength. There it is, ego strength. What is that? That's a measure of your uh, faith that you'll get your needs met or that you can meet the needs of needs of others, that your faith that you are in the love flow. I'm here to tell you you're in the love flow. And, uh, being empathetic and aware will build that confidence and that ego strength, that strength of the self. You say, what is the self? That's a tricky question. But uh, there are many personalities, uh, sorts, with, because you have many perspectives that are in your self. So you have a lot of self-identities. Um, you're a different person in one circumstance and uh, with another. I remember somebody talking about the, a wartime situation in which uh, there was a, a guy that was uh, very cowardly, just day-to-day -day life. You know, anybody could bully him, push him around. He was uh, kind of a coward, they thought. But then, uh, in the circumstance of war, uh, he would risk his life uh, to save others and uh, show great courage. Was that the same person? Oh, uh, well, you can say it was, but you can also argue that it wasn't. Um, we should have to integrate all of these uh, perspectives within ourselves in order to uh, to best survive uh, society. People need to know, uh, you know, the brand of something. What is your brand? What is you? Who are you? What integrated ego strength person are you? Um, you know, you, you know, you need to slap your your name on top of it, and uh, they go, oh, well, I know Mary, because Mary is this way and that way. Okay. But uh, it's a bit of an illusion. But it's, uh, it's also a necessary thing. Why it exists in society, it's... Uh, Who's responsible for you? Well, you are. Um, that's a necessary view in society. But uh, 
good. Don't, uh, it shouldn't be taken and used in a punishing kind of way. A good friend. So, this is all I've lived in, just, you know, an old guy here just at the top of his head uh, stringing words together, and I, I hope I've done it well enough to uh, get you to think, because the important thing is not me talking to you. It's uh, you grabbing ideas and, and talking within yourself. Do I agree with this, or don't I agree with like and what do I not like and um, what might I try in my journey so it's really up to you but I I, I hope that I can contribute as, uh, to your journey and, uh, and uh, I'm sure that if I could hear you and uh, experience you that you would contribute to mine so, the only real guru is all of us working together in love. That's the supreme. That would be the supreme sense of self, you know, would be all of us together. All of us who are points of knowing, the, the universe knowing, itself, Carl Sagan. So, of course you understand that I meant that Carl Sagan said something like, thank you. Um, now, just going back over what I tried to say, um, the NDE experiment, uh, experience um, is an experience within the mind. So is inner mind communication. The other is kind of extreme, and uh, you feel like you've literally left your body in many cases. Uh, the inner mind communication, you have left yourself. And, uh, hmm, very similar. You've gotten outside of your dramatic timeline. You guided yourself into the future from imagined sense of what the future can hold. And uh, you have experienced compassion, which helps you to feel your feelings, which are coming from your needs, helping you to find the blessings and unlearn the helplessness that uh, was a part of your past. So you're instead of, what do I mean by that? If you're hurting a lot, you know, and you have certain needs uh, that were, you were helpless to get, those needs produced under that helplessness a great deal of anxiety. So that means a lot of times in the past you may have pushed away people that were trying to love you because the needs that that they were trying to meet in you were things that you felt a lot of anxiety about so the treasure you find you go back and you see wow so some some folks were actually trying to care about me and, uh, and they valued me. And uh, before, you might not have noticed. So it's not all about, uh, you know, like in the medical model, just upsetting people <laughs> by uh, digging into the, the negative. Uh, it's uh, an exploration within yourself, a spiritual exploration in which you uh, can begin to transcend helplessness around your needs and your feelings and their expression and uh, your circumstances and uh, help you to grow spiritually and uh, increasing your your virtues 
goodness from compassionate empathy, truth from objective empathy, and artfulness, the ability to appreciate life uh, in all of its uh, movie types. To be able to appreciate everything uh, as something that, that can be an enjoyable experience. And uh, when you're in that state, you're in heaven, right? There's a connection to the mythologies. So who is in heaven? Your artist is always in heaven. You know, they uh, meet somebody, you know, in the NDE, and it's this wonderful spirit, and they say, God. Well, yeah. Um, the artist within you uh, is certainly at least a reflection. If that's real, it's it's a it's, it's a reflection of that, and uh, something that's very real in you. And uh, the Buddhist, you know, they they refer to that, you know, to that part of you that that is totally transcendent that you really can't put any words to um, and nothing can define it because it's outside of definition it's outside of the timeline it's a perspective that's very artful and from as if outside um, that's where you get these uh, supernatural kind of ideas and things no, well, there is a part of you that's outside of what you think is natural. Um, it doesn't mean that it's actually supernatural. But it might be. Who knows? But um, your inner artist is always in heaven. And uh, always there to lift you up. Tell you that, hey, no matter what you did or how things were going, it's a great story that you're writing. It's really a fun thing to observe vicariously. Um, but hey, let's add some meaning to that life. Be the hero of love. Um, many times I, I think I miss that opportunity, sometimes because I'm around other people who would not understand uh, me reaching out the way I would like to do. Um, sometimes uh, I uh, hmm, find myself perhaps blocking someone else who wanted to reach out. Oh, we don't have time. You know, we don't have time to get to know this person that's begging on the street. We don't have time to offer them a dollar or see if they need a ride we don't have time well we've all done that and you know that's okay because you can't go too far out of your comfort zone or you become dysfunctional we are not god we're not the universe but we are whatever you conceive of the ultimate uh, absolute truth or the universe we're a part of it definitely and we're a part of it its own knowing of itself so yeah carl sagan was a mystic <laughs> yeah surprise <clears throat> so was einstein So was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, Malcolm X, Mahatma Gandhi, so many others, and uh, many in your own life, you know, humble people doing good and uh, helping the society around them, involving more and more people and themselves into a love flow. There's no lot, a whole lot of group, uh, greed that should be there. You know, 
But you're never going to uh, get rid of greed by punishing people for evil. When you increase the love flow, that will naturally um, deal with the uh, elements of greed and power monger. Um, remember that uh, hurting minds are the ones who are power mongering and greedy. Yeah, and Trump, you know, he has value in the love flow, you know. You can learn from him. You can, uh, by his uh, bad behaviors, you can understand uh, the value of democracy by his threatening it. And uh, you can appreciate him and love him as someone suffering from a lot of damaged faith in his, uh, in his life. But that doesn't mean you let him get elected to the presidency and, and try it again to take over the country. You don't let your five-year-old drive your car down the road. Um, you know, so he needs a lot of healing. Uh, we we need to we need to not be punishing because punishment. Uh, it goes against the grain of of the the progress that you might want to make, either through inner communi communication, uh, mind communication, or uh, actually having had a, a near death experience. You know, to bring these things to the world is uh, is your job. It's your job to be a hero of love and to a degree possible for you in your life. That doesn't mean that you suffer in a difficult relationship. You know, if it's past your comfort zone, something you can't help, you need to get out of it so you can uh, live and, and thrive and uh, become a greater force in the love flow. So sometimes that means you have to get away from people. Sometimes it might mean that you have to let them fail so that they can learn. So don't stay in a bad marriage, you know, go, oh, I have to have empathy. He didn't mean it when he hit me or she hit me. Or they said this really hateful thing to me every day of our marriage or something. Yeah. Don't do that. Try to try to make sure that you're in a safe place to grow because there are so many people that you can benefit. Though if someone's keeping you from doing that, you need to get away from it. That's where uh Buddha said, uh, well, if you can't find something equal to yours and someone equal to yourself or better, um, just walk alone. <laughs> you know? um, that doesn't mean that's, that uh, someone who's hurting can't be your follower, um, learn from you, and, and it doesn't mean you don't reach out and uh, help people as long as you're capable uh, of help sure but if you're going to be a team you know with a marriage or you know in a business or whatever you, you need to pick people that uh, that uh, that you can grow with and who will help you grow um, and then you, you know, who will uh, actually pay attention to you when you're, when you're not just when you're hurting, but when you're, when you're reaching out, trying to help the love flow. Now, the politics involved with Gaza and the Ukraine, similar to that. You know, you can't. 
You know, there's sometimes when you have to fight for what's right. And um, that, you know, don't don't be sad and not glad that uh, that there will be hurt uh, involved. And uh, hmm. well, I would say uh, if you're a strong military force, that you act in a forgiving way toward people you capture. And you, uh, you know, bless those that curse you. You know, you try to to help them, show them a better way. You uh, not just help them, but you don't punish them. You know, you you protect yourself from them. Might have to, you know, some people might have to be kept in a secure uh, situation or location. It doesn't mean that you should heap punishment on it. And uh, go in with uh, your troops or fully supported and armed, just in case. But send those troops in to get uh, Israel. Send those tr your troops in to make sure the people there are eating. As a war effort, that has its value because there are good people who are scared to tell you where Hamas is hiding. And, uh, yeah, so if they see that uh, a strong force is caring about them and uh, helping them uh, in this war to, you know, make sure they get plenty of food for their children and so on. Well, they're going to, you know, have the courage to tell you, yeah, there's a tunnel system and it's over here and Hamas is there. Um, yeah. The intel alone that you get from that kind of caring is uh, going to be valuable. And, uh, that doesn't mean walking in unarmed, but it does mean walking in with a heart. The same thing goes with uh, the Ukraine. You know, I'm on Ukraine's side. But um, if you can pick a side, I don't, as far as the troops go, they're, the troops of the Russian troops are just deceived. They are, they're doing like, well, any group of humans do. Uh, they follow the leader. And uh, they don't want to be, you know, kicked out of the tribes. <laughs> it's their survival. Keep that in mind and you and have true empathy. And yeah, fight for your territory. But uh, when you do, and when you capture the, the Russian soldiers, uh, be kind to them. And uh, don't be punishing. What is wrong with punishment? Well, disincentives, that, I'm not talking about you don't have any uh, disincentives going. I'm not saying that. You know, when you speed and you get a ticket, that's a nice disincentive. It kind of reminds you uh, that, uh, yeah, you can hurt somebody and others, you know, by speeding. You know, it's a nice little reminder. Mm -hmm. And one, you know, <laughs> that will help keep things in check in society. But uh, punishment means that you want to hurt people in order to, and uh, frighten people in order to get them to, to do the right thing. And uh, people don't change that way. They change as Jesus talks about, you know, by, uh, you know, being recognized as uh, people who are hurting and uh, who need a, uh, a position of love. 
So, there are ways of being very spiritual and still uh, being protective of your sovereign territories and so on. And uh, the more you increase communications with empathy, it's like a near-death experience again, you know. You will, in that love that you share back and forth, in that understanding that you share back and forth, then your trust in each other grows, and you have a real sense of what the intent of uh, the other person is, and they have a sense of your intent. When you're communicating in these ways, there's a deeper place that I talk about, uh, the infant mind. And uh, the infant mind is where, you know, before language, you had no self-concept. That's uh, a good place to relax in and to, uh, to feel uh, things that uh, you have no words for. And uh, there are techniques for that. But that's for another video. I think this needs to be wrapped up. And uh, I love to sing my Irish blessing. It is from my heart. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand or her hand, its hand. Um, anywho, um, I love you. Never met a person I didn't, didn't love, couldn't love with the right perspective. All right? We're one human family, and if we don't learn to get along and, and fix our problems together, well, species will cease to exist. I don't think that, uh, nature can come up with a replacement uh, here or somewhere else. Certainly shouldn't be so full of uh, hubris, as uh, Neil deGrasse says. You're Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, I call him Neil deGrasse. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> eh, well, I, this old brain gets things a little messed up. I hope you can tolerate that. I like to end my videos by uh, honoring that uh, point in each of us that is the universe knowing itself. And uh, it means a lot of other things too that I mentioned in other videos. <laughs> the, uh, the ability, the potential for increasing the love exists in all of us. Some guy call that the Buddha nature, the Christ nature, whatever you want. It's there. And, uh, we all share that. And so anyway, let's wrap this up. The word that expresses that kind of uh, honoring that echoes back to you, includes all of us, is namaste. So, make a great day today, whenever you hear this, or a great evening, and uh, namaste.